Hi, for the warm up, um, we've got two problems. Part one, which is to write code here that will add up all the integers from one to n and print the result. And we should get 55 because for this example, n is 10. But I don't want you to hard code just one plus two plus three plus four. I want you to write code. So uh, we're going to do a for loop. I already made you n and a sum variable. We're going to add them up into. So we're going to do a for loop and go from 1 to 10 and just add all those numbers to sum. For int i equals 1, i less than or equal to 10. We're going to go all the way up to 10. i plus plus. And in here, we're going to say sum plus equals i. Now, when we run this, we should get 55 now on the printout. It was going to print 0 before. Okay, so part one, we're all good. Hopefully you see how this works. I just made this sum variable ahead of time for you so that I could print it ahead of time so that you could, it could be pretty. Okay, part two, factorial. Uh, you may or may not have learned this yet in math, but a factorial of a number is, uh, you take that number times one less, times one less, times one less, all the way down to one. So for example, three factorial is three times two times one or six. And 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. And 10 factorial is 3,628,800. I figured it out on my calculator. But we're going to write code right here that does it uh, using a for loop. So um, again, I think I'm just going to do i from 1 to 10 again. And i equals 1. Uh, I uh, less than or equal to 10. Sorry. Uh, you know, I did 10 up here. I meant to do n. Sorry. Um, anyway, n is 10, but that's the whole point of doing it with a variable. Um, what they say, my bad. Uh, and down here, I made a variable called factorial already, and we're going to say factorial equals factorial times i. And alternatively, we could have said factorial times equals i. That would do the same thing, but um, I just write it out because we don't use times equals as often as we use um, plus equals. And, uh, you know, it might have confused people. But this will multiply 1 times 1 and then times 2 all the way up to n, which is in this case is uh, 10. So we're going to get 3,628,800. All right, that's all we had to do for the warm up. As a little preview, today we're going to learn how to do these two types of functions in a different way using something called recursion.